Tyrannosaurs are everyone's favorite group of giant bone-crushing bruisers. Their apparent strength and imposing appearances have gifted them a top spot in popular culture. However, their evolution is hard to resolve, as evidence mounts that it went in all sorts of wibbly-wobbly directions from Europe to southern North America. Each new Tyrannosaur found inserts a small packet of information which unclouds and clouds the image of this group of dinosaurs. Yet another one of these paleontologic data packets has been described from Cretaceous China, and it promises to be a weird one. We haven't seen a Tyrannosaur named from Asia in a decade, which really sounds weird saying out loud now that I think about it. The last Asian Tyrannosaur was of course Pinocchio Rex, or Junchosaurus. It was the final piece of evidence needed to formalize a new lineage of Tyrannosaurs that adapted smaller body sizes and longer, skinnier snoots. The Allioraminae tribe. The only other members are the two currently valid species of the Allioramus genus, Allioramus remotus and Altai. In contrast, Tyrannosaurs keep cropping up in North America, the latest being long-known specimens reinterpreted as new species, Despletosaurus wilsoni and Tyrannosaurus macraensis. Thanks to various public sources, it's known that there are well over a handful of new species and or genera yet to be published from across North America, so they show no signs of stopping. Just so we're clear, the Asian Tyrannosaur fossil record, excluding the super early forms that don't technically count as Tyrannosaurs, includes the Maastrichtian aged Contemporaneous Tarbosaurus and Allioramus of Mongolia and Northern China the Campanian-aged Zhushang Tyrannus of northeastern China, and the Maastrichtian-aged Zhangchousaurus of southeastern China. Zhangchousaurus is therefore the standout, being the only one from the south. In 2017, diligent underpaid construction workers were toiling at a site near Saha town in Nankong district, Gangzhou city, Yangshi province, when they stumbled upon the ancient rust-colored bones of an animal that's as close as nature has ever come to a dragon. These bones were protected and saved until experts could get to the scene to excavate field prepare and take them back to a museum in this case, the Shishang Museum of Natural History. Once everything was said and done, paleontologists Wen Zhizhang, Xingsheng Jin, Zhongfang Shi, and Jiang Ming Du described the remains in a July 2024 paper in Scientific Reports. All told, the specimen ZMNH M30360 consists of a halfway beautiful skull, with all its little bits preserved relatively well, plus large portions of the hind limbs and a handful of tail vertebrae from the base of the tail. Not the best specimen, but not the worst. Thanks to the uniqueness of the traits preserved within the bones, the team was able to clearly identify the animal as a brand new tyrannosaur. So they named the beast Asia Tyrannus Shuai, Asia for, well, Asia, Tyrannosaurus to keep with the Tyrannosaur theme, and the species name is to honor Dr. Xing Shu, who has been instrumental in building up Chinese paleontology with such discoveries as Dilong, Guanlong, Yu Tyrannus, and Yi. Due to the fragmentary nature of the specimen, its packet of data for the betterment of Tyrannosaur evolution is not very large. Let's first focus on the skull. It's its most distinguishing feature. As you can see from the fossil, which admittedly seems a tad smooshed at some angles, it was largely teardrop shaped, deep and blunt. This noggin was nothing like the shallow pointed snouts of the Allioramins. The author team utilized the skeletal diagram of Teratophonius by paleoartist and paleontologist Scott Hartman to show what bones were found but this doesn't represent the shapes of the actual animal. 
Since the publication of this paper, a few paleo artists, such as Brennan Valdez, have tried their hands at more accurately reconstructing a skeletal diagram of Asia Tyrannus, filling in the unknown proportions from similarly sized and aged tyrannosaurs, as well as those that are more closely related. With this diagram, plus the actual skull fossil, you can see that Asia Tyrannus had a slightly less robust skull than one might initially assume. This skull is still much more of the robust variety for Tyrannosaurs than anything like Aliuramus and Chaunchosaurus, so I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I mean, look at it. It's triangular, with a deep upper jaw, or maxilla, that bends down and tapers in a more blunted tip. Interestingly, it's also not very wide from side to side, even at the back of the skull. It's got similar proportions to other large theropod dinosaurs that are nowhere near as robust as tyrannosaurs, which characteristically have hugely inflated skulls at the back for huge jaw muscles. Perhaps this indicates Asia Tyrannus may have had a weaker bite than average. The next, and definitely more obvious feature of Asia Tyrannus is its size. The thing was tiny. As with most other groups of animals, tyrannosaurs got bigger over time. However, Asia Tyrannus was found in rocks that belonged to the Nanjiang Formation, which is dated to the Maastrichtine Age of the Late Cretaceous, somewhere around 66.7 million years ago. This makes it one of the last of the Tyrannosaurs. Such a small size seems odd until one considers that maybe this is not an adult animal. The author team took it upon themselves to cut open some of the leg bones and saw off very thin slices so they could be prepared on a slide and observed under various types of light under a microscope. This told the researchers that the Asia Tyrannus individual had died around 13 years of age. Based on this age, its body size, and the growth patterns of other tyrannosaurs, it's suspected that this individual was more of a subadult when it died. This is because of the lines of arrested growth, which are lines in the cross-section of bones which show the start and stop of growth which can provide an estimated age seemed to belong to a growth stage that was older than the growth stage at which other Tyrannosaurs, like Tyrannosaurus rex, had seen a majority of their growth. In other words, since young Tyrannosaurs seem to have an exponential growth spurt at a certain age, and Asia Tyrannus died after this age, it might also be slightly older than similarly aged individuals of Tyrannosaurus. The authors state that they think this means Asia Tyrannus really was a small-sized Tyrannosaur when fully grown, even though the one specimen was not fully grown when it died. It wouldn't have gotten much bigger had it lived. If true, this may rule out the animal being the juvenile form of an already known genus of Tyrannosaur, such as Tarbosaurus or Zhushang Tyrannus. Before I move on, I would be remiss if I didn't visually aid you in understanding the small stature of Asia Tyrannus by bringing in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme. With whatever type of math formula the authors decided to use, they estimate the animal may have been around 3.5 to 4 meters, 11.5 to 13 feet long when it kicked the bucket. Interestingly, these measurements make it the smallest valid advanced tyrannosaurine genus yet found. Thanks, Mr. Man. I should justify my last statement. Aliuramus is known from rather small individuals, but they range up to a possible 6 meters or 20 feet. At least one of the smaller forms of these tyrannosaurs was a juvenile at a younger stage of growth than our Asia Tyrannus friend. Aside from these guys, there is also Nano Tyrannus. This can of worms will remain closed. If it's a valid genus, then it's one of the smallest known. If not, then it's simply a juvenile tyrannosaurus. However, the possibility remains that Nanotyrannus individuals also grew up into much larger distinct Tyrannosaurs, so the jury remains out to lunch. With all this talk of other Tyrannosaurs, I think it is high time I bring up what the authors found out about where this little short-skulled munchkin places with its tyrant brethren. With all the traits tallied up and placed in phylogenetic software among traits of most other known tyrannosaurs, the authors found that Asia Tyrannus was most closely related to the Maastrichtian aged Alaskan Nanaxaurus. Both are at the very foot of the Tyrannosaurini tribe club. They are not granted entry. I think it's interesting that some of the authors have found justification for grouping the early diverging American Southwest Dynamoterror, Teratophonius, and Lythronax into their own tribe. 
the Teratophonini. Interesting because the authors seem to have used the skeletal of Teratophonius for their bone map diagram. Now I'm not saying they are closely related because Nanuk and Asia are grouped together as a branch that split off the branch that contains Lythro, Dynamo, and Terato, but it may show a sort of gradation in body plans over time. Assuming the adult form of Asia Tyrannus looks even remotely similar to this subadult form. I think it would be disingenuous to not point out what the authors also pointed out, that there was apparently only one trait that joined Nanoxaurus with Asia Tyrannus, their small to medium body size. This is problematic for a few reasons. A. Asia Tyrannus was not fully mature at the time of death. The authors speculate that the animal may not have grown tremendously larger as it hit full maturity, but this cannot be confirmed and B, Nanoxaurus wasn't small to medium size. The holotype specimen of Nanoxaurus belonged to a smaller animal, but there are reported but undescribed specimens that suggest a much larger size estimate of up to 9 meters, 30 feet, making it much closer in size to Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus. Some researchers have even suggested Nanoxaurus doesn't have enough resolution to be considered valid. It's a difficult critter to work with when it comes to phylogenetic analysis for now, at least so far as it seems. Thanks to the tenuous connection between Nanoxaurus and Asia Tyrannus, compounded by their funky single specimen status, some paleoenthusiasts and folks who know how to use phylogenetic software have tried their hand at making alternative phylogenetic analyses. PaleoNerd did one that put Asia Tyrannus alone as basal to the Tyrannosaurini. They did another one where Asia Tyrannus fell within another subgroup alongside a currently unnamed specimen of Mongolian Tyrannosaur labeled MNH 6266 outside of the grouping of Tyrannosaurini and Nanoxaurus. Paleontologist Andrea Gao posited skepticism over the specimen, that the growth lines aren't strong enough to support an age over 10 years at death, and that there isn't much proof it wasn't a juvenile of a known tyrannosaur or the juvenile of an unknown but not particularly unusual tyrannosaur. So for now, I think that's all I can say on what Asia Tyrannus is related to. Stay tuned! Another unusual thing with this critter is what it lived with. Asia Tyrannus is stated to come from the Nanjiang Formation, which also produced Jianchusaurus. This pairing, assuming the correct small size and robust proportions of Asia Tyrannus, is a flip of the pairing seen in Mongolia. Aliramus is small and thin-snouted, while the contemporary Tarbosaurus is large and robust. In southeastern China, it seems there was a possibility that the robust lineage Tyrannosaurs took a different ecological approach, with smaller size and smaller but still deep skulls, while the Aliuramans were big-bodied with large but still shallow skulls. What this all means remains to be seen. The Nanjiang formation seems to have a preservational preference for Oviraptorosaurs, as the vast majority of theropods dug out from it are the little beaked beasties. Bongji, Corythoraptor, Gongshusaurus, Wanansaurus, Zhongshisaurus, Nankongya, Shijingya, Tongtianlong, plus a ton of egg fossils have been recovered. They were joined by the Therizinosaur Nanxiangosaurus, a Samphospondylansauropod Zhongshi Titan, the Usauropod Ganansaurus, some possible hadrosaurs and turtles, lizards, crocs, and many more animals that have yet to be found. Sooner or later, some funky ankylosaurs are going to be found here. I just know it. Whatever the hell Asia Tyrannosaurus actually was will have to be a mystery solved another time. I just like seeing new things named, even if they end up being relinquished to the dustbin of history. They provide a much richer history to the scientific method. Nothing wrong with being wrong, and it's not like publishing a paper wastes anything but the money of the authors, which is definitely predatory but also neither here nor there. I bet these little gremlins were running around after all sorts of quick little meals on wheels. What's next for Tyrannosaur Evolution? Much, much more, so keep your eyes peeled and ears perked. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.